did anybody think that the Bengals would be here? And throughout this season and going into the playoffs, nobody in their wildest dreams thought that Bengals would be sitting here, especially with the Las Vegas Raiders and what happened, the debacle of the call that the refs didn't make. And everybody thought if that call actually was waved off and that touchdown was waved off, the Las Vegas Raiders would be here, not the Bengals, which I beg to differ. What Joe Burrow has done so far in such a young career. He's been in the league for two years. He tore his ACL, his MCL, practically his whole knee, came back as fast as he did, won four games last year, and completely turned around this team to win a division. A lot of people had no chance of thinking they were going to win. With the Cleveland Browns and the acquisitions they made in the offseason and the talent that they have, Baltimore Ravens have been a talented team. Lamar Jackson, who was MVP a couple of years ago and some of the acquisitions they made. And then the Pittsburgh Steelers, the last year for Ben Roethlisberger, a lot of people thought that Pittsburgh was going to be in it to win it as well this year. And the Bengals, with their woes in their offensive line, that's played much better this year. And some of the youth, Williams played very well this year. And if everybody doesn't remember Jonah Williams, a couple of years ago came into the league from Alabama, was a top pick. Yeah, who I wanted the Giants to draft. I remember that. And he got hurt, and he missed uh, a year and a half. And now he's come back and slowly but surely has transitioned and changed this offensive line to a Super Bowl champion offensive line. I say Super Bowl champion because a lot of people are thinking that they're going to surprise the world and knock off the L.A. Rams. But you look at this game, and they're two very different teams. You have Joe Burrow, a young quarterback, really playing like a veteran. They call him Joe Cool. He likes the glamour and the glamour off the field and on the field. This guy has a chip on his shoulder. Remember what happened with Ohio State, how Urban Meyer completely turned his back on him. He decided to get into the portal. He goes to LSU. He wins the Heisman. He wins the national championship. And from a guy that nobody thought was going to be a first-round draft pick, either a fourth-round draft pick, becomes the number one pick of the draft and has just shown you what a kid could do even when people throw him to the wolves. And we remember Tom Brady, and I've told everybody on this show and on the other shows that I've been on, I believe if there's anybody close to Tom Brady, it's Joe Burrow. Battle-tested for sure. Joe Burrow has done well late in the games. The Bengals as a team have done well in close games this year, and that's what you want to see out of a young team. You definitely saw last year them progress in terms of getting closer. They were playing close, and a lot of the losses were close. It was showing that they're a battle-tested team. And now this year, they're winning a lot of those close games. You saw a lot of wins on game-winning field goals, a lot of wins in overtime, a lot of games in overtime overall this season, and a lot of good matchups against playoff caliber teams. They barely got blown out this year, and that shows a lot of what this team is made of. It shows a lot what Joe Burrow's made of. And even this defense, they've won a lot of games late in the season defensively against the Broncos. They won a low-scoring game even when Burrow was struggling. In certain matchups late in the season in their division, they won a lot of those low-scoring games. So they can show they can win in every single way, too. And Burrow did it in so many different ways. When Chase got taken out kind of in the middle of the season, then when other guys got hurt, when their offensive line was just really struggling at certain points. They still won a lot of tight games. They won in their division. That's what they needed for them to do. And we saw that carry over into the playoffs. All three of their wins were all close games. And yeah, you could talk about the Raiders and the questionable non-call. Whatever. They probably get a field goal on that drive. So they they still likely win that game. It's the same kind of thing when people say the Patriots would have won if they called the illegal formation on the Eagles. No, the Eagles still would have got a field goal then too. So you can't really blame that bad call for the Bengals and lean towards the Raiders. And then the Titans game, nine sacks, still wins. Last week against the Chiefs, down 21-3. to A mod Monumental comeback in the loudest stadium in the NFL. So it proves a lot about the Bengals being so battle-tested. And also, when you look at the Rams, Matthew Stafford, everybody keeps talking about legacy. Does this hurt Matthew Stafford's legacy? If anything, it helps his legacy. I don't think it affects anything. Matthew Stafford, this is the first time he's playing on a Super Bowl contending team, and he goes all the way to the Super Bowl. Now, obviously, he's the veteran quarterback, and you're going to bet on the veteran quarterback, but we've seen this many, many times. Russell Wilson, remember when he played Peyton Manning in the Super Bowl here in New York? Everybody thought Peyton Manning's Broncos, that offense was legendary, one of the best offenses of all time. And then they go into MetLife Stadium against the very young Seattle Seahawks and the very young Russell Wilson, and they laid up a lousy goose egg. And Peyton Manning loses another playoff game and another championship that he could have put on his resume. So again, you look at Joe Burrow, This is a game where Joe Burrow really changes his name from Joey Cool to Joey Elite. And I think he right now is on a cusp of being an elite quarterback in his league if he's not already. I also look at Henderson coming back. He could play a big part in this game for the Rams. I think Henderson, out of all the three running backs that they have, and they have a trio of Sonny Michelle, 
Akers, and now him. If Henderson comes back, I expect them to use him a lot in this game. He's a beast of a man that can run on the outside. He can run through power, run through walls. I think they're going to use him enough where it's going to open up the field for the wide receivers. I think Cooper Cup will have a big game. I think the guy that's going to be shut out in this game is Odell Beckham. And the reason why is they are not going to be able to stop Cooper Cup. They tried last week San Francisco, who's a better secondary than the Bengals do, okay? There's no question that. And they double teamed Cooper Cup, and they couldn't stop Cooper Cup. He had over 140 yards, two touchdowns. You can't stop him. So if you keep him to two touchdowns and 100 and some yards, and that's the only guy that scores in the game except a field goal kicker, you have a chance to win this game. I think they try to shut down Cooper Cup as much as they can and not let Odell Beckham beat him, not let Jefferson beat him. Let the game be won by the defense, and that's what usually happens. Defense wins championship. I'm going to bet more on Von Miller in their front seven, a guy that's done it, who's been a Super Bowl MVP, and Aaron Donald, who I think is the best defensive player we've seen, I think, when it comes down to it, of all time. And then there's Jalen Ramsey, who I think is not 100% healthy. He did not look very good against Tampa a couple weeks ago. I do believe Jamar Chase is a guy that he's never played against, and I think he's going to cause a lot of problems for Jalen Ramsey, Speedy. I mean, it's interesting what they're going to do with Jamar Chase because they've maneuvered him around in so many different roles. And you saw the Chiefs double-team him after he had that 266-yard performance in the regular season against them. And you also saw against the Titans him being used on a lot of screen passes more to counteract the Titans' man blitz and deeper zone blitz type scenarios. Now, he's still allowed nine sacks, so it's not like he completely did it, but Jamar Chase was still getting a lot after the catch, and I think that kind of motion game could be something that the works make it work against this Rams defense, because Jalen Ramsey, it's claimed that he always shadows the number one receiver like every single snap, but that hasn't been the case when you can get other guys in motion. We saw the 49ers do that with Debo Samuel in a lot of their matchups. Even teams with lesser receivers we've seen try to do that even if they are labeled as the number one receiver in certain matchups that can work against Jalen Ramsey so if Zach Taylor is going to out coach the defense in this matchup they're going to have to use Jamar Chase in so many different ways and we've seen that in the postseason in terms of some x factors there's two guys I like on the Rams you mentioned Henderson I think they're going to use him a lot in motion because he's also one of those kind of receiver running back hybrids when he was in college and very shifty And he's a guy that's going to try to send guys in motion and maybe try to have him bite in man coverage or blitz or something like that. And also I like Van Jefferson and Robert Blanton in this game too. Physical Van Jefferson against some bigger Bengals corners. And Robert Blanton, who's kind of serving that tight end wide receiver hybrid role with Tyler Higbee out. And the Bengals have struggled this year against tight ends. Even though they did do a good job against Travis Kelsey, 10 catches, 95 yards of the touchdown is still good, but they limit him to short catches. Oh, absolutely. You look at what Jamar Chase can deliver, and how about Higgins, who's been sensational really throughout the playoffs. Uh, everybody keeps talking about Odell Beckham being the second best or the third best wide receiver in this game. I beg to differ. You look at Jamar Chase and Cooper Cup, you can argue one or the other are the two best in this game. And then I believe it's Higgins. I think T. Higgins is so underrated. He had over 1,000 yards this year. I think he had eight touchdowns. He's been really, really good. He's a big guy. He's a big target. And who's going to stop him? If Jamar Chase is getting taken out by Ramsey, who's going to take out T. Higgins? Williams? Weddle? Are you going to really do that? I think Higgins is going to play a big part. But the guy to watch, if you're a betting man, it's Tyler Boyd. I think he's the guy. If you want to bet on something right now, if the Bengals have a chance to win this game, It's going to be Boyd. I think Boyd is a sensational route runner, slant plays. You could do so many different things with him on the outside, and you could put him in the slot as well. I think Tyler Boyd is going to play a big part in this game. Joe Mixon is going to play a big part in this game if the Bengals have a chance to win. So it's so interesting. And and Sean McVay, the person that has the most pressure going into this game is Sean McVay. Sean McVay is the coach of this team. Not Matthew Stafford. Sean McVay is the one who wanted to trade for Matthew Stafford. Not Matt Stafford. And Sean McVay gave up his young quarterback that took him to the same place, the Super Bowl, a couple of years ago, and came up short. It wasn't because of the quarterback. It was because of the Bill Belichick wanting to take out the young offensive-minded coach in Sean McVay, who did nothing offensively in that game against Bill Belichick. So Sean McVay's the one who has a lot of pressure on him. If Sean McVay doesn't come out a winner in this game, you're talking about losing Von Miller in the offseason, Odell Beckham, who will not re-sign with them next year. There's no way they're going to be able to pay him, especially coming back and playing as well as he has in the second half with the Rams. He's going to be looking for a big contract, and the Rams are not going to be able to give it to him. So he will be out. So you gave up all that draft stock. And you come short, and you're you're probably not winning a Super Bowl next year because you don't have the money. You don't have the draft stock. This is their chance. If they don't do it this year, 
They're not doing it anymore. So Sean McVay will be looking for a new job very, very quickly at the end of next season. I think he'll obviously be there next season because he's been to a Super Bowl yeah. twice. But they're not going to win next year again. And that's four times they have not gotten over the slate. So I, I think that right now the pressure is on Sean McVay. As good as a coach he is and as good as he's been since he's taken over that job, it's all about winning Super Bowls, especially moving to L.A. and having the Super Bowl in your home city, in your home stadium. At SoFi, you expect him to win the game. And how about the halftime show? Are you looking forward to seeing a little Eminem? Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Or Mary J. Or how about... Uh, you know her well. Yes, Dr. Dre or... Kendrick Lamar, or how about Snoop Dogg? Yeah, Dogg. You know, don't ask Snoop, me. To say Snoop Dogg doesn't want to see the Bengals in the Super Bowl as a Steelers fan. I'm sure. No, to me, it's it's going to be a fun game. Expect a very very close game, and also expect one of these quarterbacks to really become center stage going into the offseason. Matthew Stafford has always wanted to be center stage as the quarterback and winning quarterback. If he wins. He's going to be center stage for the whole offseason and have the opportunity to hoist that Lombardi trophy. But if Joe Burrow wins this game somehow, the superstar, the contracts, the endorsements that this guy is going to have, this kid's going to have moving forward in his career could be unbelievably outrageous. So expect it. And also the Super Bowl commercials are going to be fun to watch, which I watched a lot of them, by the way. Some of them are funny. Kevin Hart's been on a couple of them. They always have the one with the NFL players where they do some crazy stuff last year. They were tackling each other. I'm interested to see what's going to happen this year. I haven't seen a commercial like that, but I'm sure they're going to have one.